In this video, I'm gonna show you five really interesting ways to use noise and grain inside your After Effects projects. Okay, so we're gonna look at noise to add film grain, to reduce banding, to help with compositing, to add texture, and then the last one is a secret. Ooh. Within each of these, we're just gonna explore a whole bunch of techniques that you can use to mix and match to get interesting results in any of your projects. Now, I am a huge fan of adding texture to my animations. Often, I'm just trying to remove a layer of sort of clinical digital feeling and make it a bit more handmade. And noise can help with that in a few ways. One of those is with film grain. So film grain is an artifact of light not burning into chemicals on film stock evenly. And it can give video capture on film a bit of a grainy look that can be really pleasing depending on what look you're after. So here is some footage that we have that has been filmed digitally and let's look at how we can add some film grain. The easiest is to just go over to our effects and presets and add the effect grain and it does give you a little preview window to save on rendering because this is a bit of a render heavy effect but we can turn off that preview window and change the viewing mode to final output to view the whole thing. And you can see After Effects chugging away trying to render this effect but I do find it gives a really nice texture most notably in the flatter background areas with less detail and less contrast and honestly it looks pretty good maybe a little heavy maybe but we can just lower the intensity from 1 to 0.5 and there's your film grain out of the box in After Effects. But I wanted to show you another way to achieve something similar that is just a bit more render friendly, but really it's, I find a really useful technique that you can use with a lot of different effects and textures, not just with noise and grain. So let's delete this effect. And normally I would add a new adjustment layer, call it effects because we always label our layers and add the effect noise. And I'm adding this on an adjustment layer, which will affect every layer underneath it. Even though we just have one layer here, because often you might have multiple layers underneath and it's good to keep your top effect like noise separate from those so you can change whatever you want underneath. And we can increase the noise. Let's go up to 10% to make it really obvious. And this renders really fast, but this looks a lot more digital because it is affecting every pixel. And to make it look a bit more like film grain, we can add the effect Gaussian blur and then just increase the blur till it looks more like a nice film grain. There now our grain is looking nice and film grainy, but without taking that time to render. But unfortunately, it is also blurring out all of our footage, which isn't too noticeable on our footage here, but that's something you will want to avoid in most cases. So what can we do? That's where we use a different technique. So instead of applying these to an adjustment layer, we're gonna delete this and apply these to a new solid, which we can create with Control plus Y. And let's make sure its color is exactly 50% gray. That is very important. So let's hit OK. And now let's set its blending mode from normal to overlay and if we toggle it on and off we can see that it makes no difference to our footage and that's because overlay works by having any pixels or colors in this layer that are darker than 50 percent gray it is going to darken the layer underneath and anything lighter it will lighten the layers underneath but if it's in the middle at 50 percent there is no change at all and we can definitely use that to our advantage so let's add our noise effect again and we can increase the noise to 10 percent and here we can see it affecting our footage but now we can also add our blur effect and we can increase the blur to anything we like. And now we've got a nice blurred, noisy grain effect, but without blurring out our underlying footage. Now let's increase the noise even more to make it more obvious there. And again, this is barely noticeable in the highly detailed areas that are really sharp over here. You're mainly gonna see it in the background. And we can also add any more adjustments and effects to this layer. We could add a posterized time, take that down to 12 frames per second, just to slow down the speed of the noise in the background, if you'd like that. You could add a turbulent displace to distort this noise. You could add fractal noise to get a different noise entirely. They might not all look great, but if you apply them to a layer that is 50% gray set to overlay, it can be a really useful technique to affect your footage. Now I should also mention another noise effect that we can use instead of using noise and Gaussian blur. So let's delete all of these layers and we can use the effect noise HLS, or what I prefer noise HLS auto. And here we can set the noise from uniform to grain and we just have a lot more options here. So it's kind of in between the effects, add grain and noise. So we can increase the lightness to add more grain. Probably don't want to go too hard. And it looks nice and natural, but again, this is a bit render heavy. Now the second technique is to remove banding. But first, a quick word about this video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN protects your data and identity from heartless tech giants, devious cyber criminals, and rogue artificial intelligence. It can swap the virtual location of your device, changing your IP address to unlock juicy, juicy content that might be blocked or censored in your area. In Australia, in the US, and pretty much every other country on the planet, you cannot stream 2001 A Space Odyssey on Netflix. 
but there is one country if you can. And with Surfshark, you can change your location to Japan where you can watch 142 minutes of one of the best science fiction pictures ever produced. Surfshark also secures your personal information. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi uploading your latest renders at midnight, hackers won't have a chance at getting at your data in what would otherwise be an absolute feeding frenzy. Enter the promo code Ben Marriott for 83% off, plus an extra four months free. And Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is absolutely zero risk to trying it. You could watch 2001 304 times in 30 days. And when you're done, you might have half a chance of explaining to me what the ending is about. Check out the link to Surfshark VPN down in the description. So what is banding? If you haven't come across it before, consider yourself lucky. Banding is when you have a smooth gradient or smooth colors fading into one another, but they get compressed or there's just not enough colors in your export file. So it doesn't look smooth. It will start to look a bit like this. And I'm using the posterize effect just to exaggerate it. It looks like the gradients are now separated into strips of colors. And I want to show you a few ways to avoid it. Now, this is very common, especially when working with dark colors. So I'm going to delete this footage. I'm going to work on an example by adding the effect gradient ramp. So we've got a gradient here and let's go from black to a very dark gray, which is going to be pretty common in some form or another if you have a dark background. And I hope this is coming across on YouTube because it is a pretty subtle effect, but here you should be able to see the gradient isn't smooth. There is steps between each of these shades of gray. And that is because here there are simply not enough colors to show the gradient smoothly. Now let's take a look in our color selects to break it down even further. Now we only have 255 levels of red, green, and blue to work with. At the moment we're at 20. If we go to full black, it is zero. And if we go to 255, it is white. So there are only possibly 255 different colors between these two points. So if we go to a pretty dark gray, like around 20, there's only 20 possible shades of gray that we can have between these two colors. And so we get this kind of banded result, but we can use noise to adjust that. And I'm going to explain on an even more extreme example. So I want to duplicate this layer with control command D and I want to change the gradient map going from red to yellow. And then I'm going to add the effect posterize to exaggerate this effect as well. And let's increase the amount of colors it will show. Let's go to about 12. So we can see this is a very stepped banded result, but let's add the effect noise and let's put that between our gradient ramp and posterize. Now let's zoom in a little and add 1% noise. Aha, now we can see it's starting to fade in between them a little more. Let's increase that to two, maybe to three, and then let's zoom in and see what's happening. So we've still got the same amount of colors. This is still 12 steps, but they are now starting to fade in between one another. And that's because the grain has allowed the borders between these two colors to be more, I guess, fuzzy or blurry. So instead of having a line of dark orange pixels and light orange pixels, we get some of the light orange pixels appearing more and then less frequently inside the second color. So they've now got access into enemy territory. And if we increase the noise even more, it'll get more and more smooth. So that's a really exaggerated example. It does get pretty noisy, but we do turn this result into this result still using the same amount of colors. So let's go back to our practical example. So we're fading between really dark colors. Now, the best thing to do to increase the banding is first of all, increase your color depth. You can do that by clicking over here and here it's at eight bits per channel. Let's change that up to 16 and hit okay. Now you won't see any results here, but then if we add the noise effect and just add one percentage of noise, gone. All that banding has completely disappeared. And the next noise technique is using it to help with compositing. And this can often be overlooked if you aren't new to it. So here we want to track text into this scene. And if you don't know how to track text into a scene, it's really easy. You just add the effect 3D camera tracker. You don't have to click anything. After Effects will think about our footage and get the tracking details and then click create camera. And now you can select your type layer and turn it into a 3D layer by clicking this checkbox down here. And now it is tracked to our footage. So now we can increase its size and move it around wherever we want. But now it's comfortably locked into our scene. Now, if we look closely, our footage is pretty noisy. There is noise all over the place, not just in dark areas. Now, any footage you have will have some artifact from the filming. It won't always be this obvious, but it will be there. You'll just have to look closely. So we can see there's lots of noise in our footage, 
but there is no noise in our text. Our text is one complete flat color. And you might want that to be completely flat and to stand out a lot from the background. But if you do want to composite it so that it looks like this was actually in the environment, there are a few obvious things we can do. We could add some lighting, add some shadows, but getting the overall noise to match is important as well. That way it will look like it was all filmed on the same day by the same camera. Now there is an effect in After Effects called match grain. Let's set that to final output as well. And that essentially will do what we're asking it for. So here we can take the noise source layer from our footage and then we get this result. So this effect never really works for me exactly how I want, but that might just be the footage I'm using. I find it's easier to just ignore this effect, delete it and add my own noise and try to match that by eye. And let's just go up by 1%. I think 2% is probably close. Let's watch that. Okay, that looks close enough. Now this is a really subtle effect and lighting and shadows are going to be important as well, but having consistent noise between all of your elements can really help them feel more connected. Okay, now the fourth technique is to use noise to add texture. I just love the texture some of these noise effects give, especially something like this. It is really intense and won't be appropriate for most projects, but I think it's really cool. So to get this result, first find yourself some cool, edgy looking footage. Human skulls will be essential and black and white if possible. And then to this footage, we are going to add the effect noise HLS auto, which will automatically animate the noise. Let's increase the lightness way up to 100%. So it is really noisy, but then let's change the noise from uniform to grain. So our chunks of noise are larger. They're bigger than one pixel. They've kind of clumped together, more like film grain. And then we're going to add the tint effect, which we can use to remap the black and white values. And let's remap the white to just a really bright color. Let's go for red. They're looking even edgier now. And to get rid of all of this noise in the black areas, we can add the effect levels. And we are really just going to crush the blacks really intensely. So we can take this arrow here on the left and drag it far over to the right until most of those black areas have disappeared. I don't mind if there's still some in there. And now we've got this really nice kind of intensely textured noisy footage, but I think it looks really cool. Now, if you're not into this really intense gritty look, you can just tone down some of these effects like the noise, take that down to maybe 50% and it's much subtler. Actually, I like how this one looks even better. So hopefully you'll find these techniques useful. And our last technique is another useful way to add a grainy shading techniques to your projects. So I've got a whole bunch of rectangles just on a shape layer and let's add the effect CC radial fast blur. And let's increase the amount way up to 80. Let's go even more, let's go for 90. And change the zoom from standard to brightest so we get a nice sharp edge closest to our center. And we can move the center around and we get this really nice looking sort of directional lighting or shadows, which I do have a separate tutorial for if you want more detail about this. Because here we're just using this to create some nice blurry edges here. Because then what we're gonna do is add the effect noise alpha. And here we can use this to add noise to the alpha channel of our layer. And if we toggle our transparency off, we can see that it is fully opaque within the rectangles and then it fades off into nothing. Let's switch it back to white background and then let's increase the amount, bump it up to around 75 and then make sure we change the original alpha from clamp to edges. So we keep the original squares intact. And I do have quite a few tutorials about different techniques for adding grain and noise to your shading. But here is another one just to add to your toolkit for when you want a more stylized, noisy look. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.